Welcome back. Glad you could join us. Uh, it's Platypus Scotsman. We are going to cover a basing tutorial today. And it's going to be a... I'm, I'm revisiting a tutorial that I've already done before. No, I shouldn't say a tutorial. I'm revisiting a base I've already done before. Uh, I did it years ago for when I played War Machine Hordes. And it was for one of my floating um, constructs. So I wanted to elevate it, but I didn't want the plastic piece, so I created a stump. That being said, one thing to note on this tutorial is if I was going to attach a miniature to it, I would pre-drill the stump and I'd also attach a rod to the actual miniature itself and then I would attach it, make sure it works, and then I'd remove it, I'd paint the base or however you want to do it. Um, when I did it, I did I attached it and then sprayed it and then did it all together. So, uh, the, but that's how you can do it. Uh, there's many ways to do it, but let's go ahead and jump right in and get to it and Welcome aboard and hope you enjoy it and hope you learn something from it and let's go. Years ago I made this stump base and I just kind of want to uh, replicate it and show how I did it. And um, that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So it'll be something similar to this. Uh, I wish I had one with a knot because that uh, is, is pretty cool, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is uh, what I, I want a kind of a rough jagged edge in the break. So what I usually like to do is uh, use an X-Acto knife to score it and then snap it. I shouldn't say score it, I just go in and make uh, slices like this, kind of control some of the breaks and make some of them more, uh, make sure I kind of ensure that they're uh, have a little bit more character. All right, the break didn't happen as as good as I would like, but what I'll do now is I'll just get like a the snipping tool or something like that. So the idea in mind is I'm going to probably glue the model or the figure on this side of it. So I kind of I want to off center it a little bit. Okay, I made some sculpt mold. This is now dry, so I'm going to apply some sculpt mold to this. Okay, once I got the basic structure laid out, I'm going to use this feathering tool. It's a, it's a tool from, uh, you can get it uh, for sculpting. Actually, I don't know what the name of it is. I just made that crap up. Now that it's all dry, I'm going to paint with a raw sienna. Now I'm going to do a surf and sepia wash. It's not dark enough for me, so I'm going to do Drucci Violet and darken it up. I'm going to lightly dry brush some Cabinet Gray. I'm going to dry brush some raw sienna. I'm only going to hit the bark. I'm not going to hit the part up here where it's broken. I'm just going to hit the bark. I'm going to dry brush a soft gray on the top part. I'm gonna dry brush a khaki now. Right now I'm just kind of playing around and see what works. I may come back and do a glaze over top of it or to soften it or blend it all down, but why not? In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit with a sepia. I should have never hit the hit with sepia at the very beginning. I should have just went straight to purple and then just did this pattern what I'm doing now. Now I'm gonna hit with sepia.
All right, now I'm gonna add some uh, fine turf. It's a mixed blend from Woodland Scenics. Uh, it's part of their ground cover. Uh, and it's the green mixed blend. Uh, I like this just for moss and I'll do some things to it. But I'm gonna use a uh, turbo tacky glue because I want the dry time to be a little bit quicker than normal, uh, normal Elmer's. I don't want to wait around. I'm just going to gently tap it in there so it adheres. I applied some glue. I'm going to put it in my mixture of uh, static grass and clump foliage and that moss stuff you find in potter plants and just cover everything I put glue on. And then since I'm not using a static grass applicator, I'm just going to tap the bottom of it. Okay, so I applied some foliage to the bottom. Uh, this right here, this, and a piece on the back right back here is, uh, it's uh, from Creative Accent. It's the medium green ditch weeds. And I just snip some off, cut them up, trim them down a little bit. Like here's a little bit left over. And I just went around and glued it in. I used some, crap, <laughs> Army Painter flowers uh, for right there. These little green clumps are some um, some of this from Mini Nature. They're long buffalo grass tufts. Um, I would rather go army painter, but I'm mute, but I have them, so I'm gonna use them up. And other than that, uh, just gonna wait for it to dry and then I'm gonna add some color to it. Well, I might actually do that sooner. But anyway, that's what, what those are and just added those in. Now I'm gonna lightly paint slash dry brush some colors onto the green. This one's a moot green. I'm gonna go around and do some uh, dry brushing slash painting. Going around with some yellow now. Now I'm just going to touch up some areas with this Anthonium Camel shade. I just want to, even though there's grass in here. I still want to have a definitive line of darkness to for separation and shadow. So I'm just going to darken that up right there so it's just not all one blend. So it kind of gives an idea of a shadow. And you're still kind of painting the, the grass as if it was a miniature. Same with some of the moss. It's kind of not heavy just barely touch it up a little bit gonna go around the base of this shrub do the same one thing to do is make sure you wipe your brush off after application because moss or the flock and different things can get adhered to your brush and you don't want to mix it with your paint so make sure you wipe your brush off well that's a wrap on that tutorial if you have any questions or comments leave them below and if you want to follow us on instagram to see thumbnails of the things that we do it's a uh, platypus scotsman and we also have a page on facebook platypus scotsman anyway uh it was fun to revisit this tutorial like i said before if you have any questions but the thing is, is uh, if you want to pin it uh, i would uh, do all that prep beforehand and also Scooter pointed out too that uh, this could also be used for scatter terrain. Scatter terrain. I sent him some pics and he said you could use it for scatter terrain. Uh, there's a tutorial for that too, so yeah, you do that. Again, appreciate all those uh, who have uh, subbed. If you uh, like the channel and you get some value out of it, uh, please sub to the channel. Uh, hit the notification bell so you get some notifications. And like it if you like it. Uh, if, and if you haven't constructed criticism, um, don't just leave a dislike. You know, uh, leave a comment, give me some constructive criticism on what you think, and um, share it, uh, get it out there so other people can use it. And that's one of the most important things to me is uh, I want to be able to teach and show other people. So by sharing it, that does that for me and gets it out there so people can use this information and, uh, you know, improve or add to their hobby in whatever way they see fit. And that's the most important thing to me. So. Um, 
Other than that, uh, remember what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. Ciao.